Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Orchestra Legends. I'm Laura Shafi, and with me in the box seat is Lionel Jacobs. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. The air is thick with excitement this morning as the Kids' Corner Ensemble takes their seats and begins tuning their instruments for what promises to be an incredible performance. Incredible is right, Lionel. Who do we have on stage this time? As you know, Laura, musicians come from all over the world to take part in this competition. But we're lucky enough to have our very own Samantha Lewis on violin in seat three. Hold on. Did you say competition? I think so. Why? This isn't a competition. It's an orchestral performance. Everyone's working together. Not this time. I was able to interview Samantha earlier, and here's what she had to say. Yeah, I've always run a pretty strings-heavy game out there. Some of my friends made me play bass a couple times when they didn't have a spare cello, but if I'm going to come out ahead in this one, I've got to play to my strengths. Do you have any particular opponents that you think might be a challenge? Let's just say Kyle on Woodwinds better watch out. His game is all about the reeds, and... I know you're talking about me, string slinger. You're going down! Kyle, is it? Do you have anything to say? Just that I'm the high score champion in this orchestra, and I've beaten every one of my opponents so soundly, the conductor's begging me to switch my seat to percussion. We'll see about that, oboe boy. Yeah, sure. We'll be right back with our performance right after this. Yes! High score! Again. All right, Kyle. I think I'm done. Kyle won again? Yeah, I don't get it. This game came out when I was a kid. I've been playing for since before you guys were born. The age of millennials has fallen. The time of Kyle has come! <sighs> so it would seem. <laughs> Which game is this again? Orchestra Legends. It's one of my favorite games. Oh, I think I remember this one. It's like a music game. Please, Mr. Jacobs. It's a highly detailed orchestra simulator. Oh, right. My apologies. So, are you taking a break, then? I am. Can I play? Sure, Laura. Good luck. Okay, so which button is which? Here, let me show you. Do you want to play, Mr. Jacobs? Uh, I don't know. I've never played a highly detailed orchestra simulator before. That's all right. It'll mean you and Laura will be even. I mean, if she goes up against me, let's just say there won't be much competition. I'm pretty much a master at the game. A master, huh? Yeah, I've beaten the game on Maestro on all the sections. I can apply resin to the bow with the best of them, and my spit valve control is flawless. It's all about the timing. I see. You weren't kidding when you said highly detailed. So do you want to play? That's all right. I'll watch a couple of rounds and see how the orchestra legend does it. I think I've got it. You ready, Kyle? Yep. Don't worry. I'll take it easy on you. Never said I was worried. Which song should we play first? Let's start with... Something simple. Furalise is good. Or, you know, maybe sheep may safely graze. What about the Beethoven one? That, uh, really narrows it down there, Laura. You know which one I mean. Bum, 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 bum. I think she means symphony number five. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that one. That's not an easy one, Laura. I know, but it's one I actually know. Okay. Consider yourself warned. I'm pretty good at this, remember? Are we going to play, or are you going to keep warning me about how hard the game is? Fine. This should be interesting. Maybe for you. I've been playing all morning. Mind if I listen to the radio? Not at all. Go ahead and start it up. Whew. Nice game, Kyle. I don't understand. How? How? How what? How are you this good? You've never played this game in your life, right? This is your first time, right? You aren't pulling a fast one on me, right? I don't even remember what this game is called. You don't even... Then how are you beating me? Is there a problem, you guys? Maybe with this controller? Laura's been trouncing me at Orchestra Legends this whole time. Really? I thought you were the champion of that game. Didn't you just start playing this morning? Thanks for making me feel better, Sam. It's not that hard to explain, really. Wait, have you been using cheat codes? That's not cool, Laura. Please, I never use cheat codes. The thing with games this detailed is, if you have any idea how the real thing works, then you get a little bit of an advantage. So when it comes to the violin... You play violin in real life? Let's just say four years of practicing pays off. I don't believe it. How did I not know that? I don't exactly carry it around with me, and you've never been to my house, except for maybe that water fight a while ago. 
And I'm guessing water fights and violins don't exactly mix. You look a little relieved, Kyle. I am a bit. For a while there, I was wondering if I really was that bad at the game. Nothing like getting beaten by a beginner to take you down a few notches. Well, that's for sure. But you know, getting taken down a notch or two isn't a bad thing. We all need to be reminded from time to time that we aren't perfect. I don't know, Mr. Jacobs. It might be needed, but it's still embarrassing. Yeah, being embarrassed isn't fun. No, but I think sometimes we get a little used to the idea that the only good things in life are fun. <laughs> Embarrassment isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially if it helps us learn to do what is right. I've learned over the years that, like the Bible says in Luke 14, 11, thinking that we're better than we really are only leads to big problems. Do you have a drama script about that? I might have a couple. Well, let me take a look. And we'll listen to the radio while we wait. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the breezy drama, The Two Nests, an adapted biblical proverb about bride. Once upon a time, in a sunny valley, there lived a bluebird. That's me! I like to eat bugs, sing songs, and, you know, bird stuff. All through the early spring, our bluebird friend flew to and fro, doing all the bird stuff she could think of. Then one day, she heard a voice. Hey, uh, it's about time you made a nest, isn't it? Whoa, who said that? It's me, Instinct. You remember? I'm the thing that told you to go south last winter? Oh, yeah. That was a fun trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's time for you to make a nest now. Really? Uh, you don't want to lay your eggs in a cave, right? Uh, come on. Build a nest. <sighs> All right. Hmm. Instinct. Weird. What our bluebird friend didn't realize is that instinct was telling other birds the same thing. Mr. and Mrs. Swallow? Yeah, that's us. What is it now, instinct? It's time to build a nest. I told you it was time to build a nest. Didn't I tell you? I told him it was about time. Okay, okay. You told me. You bet I did. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, good luck on that one. And so the birds went around looking for the best place to build their nests. The bluebird was very particular. I need somewhere safe and dry. Somewhere where the cats won't find us and somewhere close to a bird bath for my spa day. Similarly, the swallows were also picky about housing arrangements. It needs to be high up, like really high up. You know how I feel about trees. The last time we set up shop in a tree, the woodpeckers kept hammering away all night and all day. Then let's not build on a tree. Obviously there are other more impressive things around here. Eventually, after looking, all of the birds found a spot that met their demands. My nest will be built in this cute little birdhouse in this rural backyard. It's quiet and perfect for what I need. How's this, babe? Giant abandoned barn. The tippy top of a hill and you can see for miles. As long as we build under the very peak of the roof, I want our nest to be higher up than any in the valley. That's literally what a hill is. And so the birds got to work. Before long, they had finished their new homes. Nice and cozy. <clears throat> our nest is the best because it's the highest in the land. Look at all the peasant birds down there. They're so beneath us, literally. As they were settling in for the first night, the wind took a slight shift. The sky filled with clouds and rain began to fall. Oh my, this looks not good. As time went on, the rain started to fall harder and the wind began to howl. The bluebird, because she was low in the valley, was gently rocked to sleep by the downpour. But for the swallows, this storm was a nightmare. The barn was battered by the rain, slammed by the wind, and before long... Something tells me where the lesson in this story. The barn collapsed completely. Yep. A pile of broken boards. We get it. Boards that would be washed away by the storm in a matter of minutes. All right, all right. Tell us the moral of the story already. After a few months, the swallows had gone away to find somewhere else to build a nest. And as for the bluebird, she raised her family in that little birdhouse in the valley. And their sweet songs brought joy to so many people that it became known as Bluebird Valley. And is still called that to this day. Are you finished? The moral is that it can be tempting to make ourselves look more important than we really are. 
We might try to dress better than others, brag about the things we've done, or show off in all sorts of ways. God tells us over and over that this is not how he wants us to live, because he knows that the higher we put ourselves, the further we have to fall. Kind of like a nest built on a rotten old barn. Are you done with the video game, kids? Yeah, I'm finished winning for the day. Yeah, I'm done too. Sam? Sure. Um, I have a question about what we were learning about today. Actually, a couple questions come to mind. You? You're not a kid. You don't have to be a kid to have questions, Kyle. But to ask Mr. Jacobs a question? I don't know. I'll allow it this time, Laura. <laughs> What's your first question, Sam? It's a small one, really. I was just thinking about how you were saying that embarrassment is a good thing. But I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, isn't it wrong to embarrass people? Good catch, Sam. And you're right. If we go out of our way to embarrass someone else, that's not living in a loving way. Very often when we try to embarrass someone else, it's because we want to feel better about ourselves. And we aren't thinking about helping them at all. Instead, we should do what we can to build others up. And if they're doing something wrong, we can correct them, but in private, so they aren't publicly humiliated. I'm guessing that's in the Bible. First, Thessalonians 5.11 and Matthew 18.15. Yeah, I figured. What's your other question, Sam? Okay, yeah. It's about being proud of stuff. I heard a lot of people talking about how they're proud of their kids or proud of something they've done. But if we're not supposed to be proud, are they doing the wrong thing? Interesting question. Do you have an interesting answer? I might. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the great missionary Paul talks about all sorts of things that most people would say made him a great person. He was a holy man, from a holy people, in a holy land. He'd been beaten, arrested, gone on crazy adventures, and almost died several times, all for Jesus. But he says in this chapter and others that these things just go to show how powerless he was and how great God is. God's the one who made him who he was. And God was the one who got him through the greatest struggles of his life. And to sum it up, Paul says, if you're going to brag about anything, brag about God and what he's doing. Because he's the one that does all sorts of amazing stuff. And he always gives credit where credit is due. Well, we wanted an interesting answer. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at that part of the Bible and see what it actually says. Not that I don't think you know what you're talking about, Mr. Jacobs, but it's a little much to get my head around this time. Oh, I'm perfectly fine with that. And if you still have questions about it, you come back and ask. Or I'm sure your parents or a teacher at church would be happy to talk it over with you. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to explain. I'll look up those verses, too. Yeah. Before we go, though, we should probably pack up the game system. Oh, right. Want to pass me that duffel bag, Laura? Here you go. And I'll turn off the radio.